Alright, what's up YouTube? So we stopped for the night. Got, I think, like 145 miles left to go. We pretty much, I think we put back, uh, I want to say like 500 and something miles today. Um, 500 and some change, at least, uh, considering I started off at uh, 648 miles to go today. I actually probably could have made it into Houston uh, with the hours I have, but, um, which is surprising for a 65 mile an hour truck. Uh, but I was trucking today, so we were really moving and uh, shaking along there. But, um, miss Texas, man. I miss this place. Uh, Texas is probably one of my favorite states to run through. I'm on this, uh, <laughs> I'm on this like little state route, right? And the state route, um, uh, and the and the U.S. highways, are speed limits of 70 and 75 miles an hour. In the other state, they're like 55. <laughs> oh, you know, I gotta love Texas, man. You know, you get on one of these little back roads and you just hauling. And uh. Yeah, man, I just love it. And I love the barbecue here, too. I, you know, I used to live in Plano, Texas back when I was in high school. Um, I went through high school for like two years in Texas before I moved to Memphis, Tennessee. So, you know, it's um, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. But with, with DART, they like to keep me up there in like Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, that general area. And lately they've been having me going to Pennsylvania a lot. So, you know, it's it's nice to be out of the, the snow and ice finally. You know, I, you know, <laughs> I was telling uh, Papa Joe, uh, there's another YouTuber on here, that's, his name is uh, Simple Living with Papa Joe. That guy is really awesome. That's a guy that I can really appreciate. Uh, it's a no sugar added kind of guy. He just tells it like it is. Um, personally, that's the kind of channel I, I, I'd like to have. You know, I'm not trying to appeal to nobody. I'm just trying to give my my point of view uh, from the perspective uh, of a rookie in the industry coming out here. I started off in 2017 the end of 2017 really and then finished my first year out in October of 2018 and then I switched over here to Dart from Schneider and I tell you what man it, it's been it's been pretty good to me so far uh, even when I was with Schneider even though you know the common conceptions about mega carriers are very negative um, I have to say Schneider is probably one of the better mega carriers to go to if you're coming out here and you're just trying to do dry van. I mean, they they didn't pay me great, but they didn't pay me terrible either. And the equipment wasn't wasn't all up to snuff, but for the most part, uh, it was enough to to get you around, you know, um, without having serious downtime issues. And you know, I, I really enjoyed working at the people, working with the people at Schneider. You know, those guys are really great. Um, the dispatchers are all really professional. You know, they don't holler and cuss at you and talk to you like you're just some nobody that nobody cares about. Um, you know, they, they treated you like you were one of their drivers and they wanted to take care of you. Um... Honestly, the only time I had troubles with Schneider is when they switched my dispatcher because my my first dispatcher went to uh, retire. Uh, she retired, so she retired out of the industry, and then they gave me a brand new dispatcher. Just got out of school for dispatcher, you know, whatever school they go to for you know learning how to dispatch. I don't know if they go to a college course to do this junk or what. Um, but most of the men that are in the dispatch office were truck drivers themselves. So most times if you get one of those guys, they're a lot easier to work with. But every once in a while, you know, you get 
a dispatcher that's not great. And, you know, you, you just got to work past it. Um, not everything goes 100%. You know, it's life. So, when there's issues with your dispatcher, you have to speak up. And I had told them previously, is like, you know, I'm having problems with this dispatcher. Like, I don't know what's going on because they started... Uh, they started putting me on live loads and live unloads, a lot of them, for no reason. And it's not like I wasn't running the freight either, because I was running as many hours as I possibly could. I would get up at the very end of my 10 hour break and run it uh, until I had no hours left. And then they started giving me all these live loads and live unloads. And I was like, you know, look, this is getting ridiculous. Um, I was like, you know, I, I barely made, barely able to make any hours because all, all the live loads and live unloads were killing me on my time on the 14 hour clock absolutely insane but um I'm about an hour north of Lufkin Texas I think on uh, I want to say it's Texas 49 or US 49 uh, I'm not too sure on that one I have to check the map for that one but like I said about an hour for uh, an hour north of Lufkin Texas and I'm 148 miles so it's about two hours and some change with a 65 mile an hour truck and you consider the speed limit 70 to 75 for the most part until you get into town and then it's like 55 45 unless you get into a real small town and it's like 35 40 but that's that's about it I mean that's that's pretty much all I got but other than that um, I already did my post trip and everything I know I promised you guys I would do it tonight. I'm sorry. Um, you know, fiance called and she was wanting to talk about some stuff. Uh, we're both looking at trying to get a house sometime soon, so we're both trying to do with what we can, with what we got. You know, she's in college still. She won't be, she's thinking that she'll be able to graduate early so we can maybe get a house um, maybe next year or this year. But um, either way, you know, we're trying to get our, our finances set so that we're good so that if we do decide to go ahead and buy a house, we've got the money to do so. And uh, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, there's a lot of putting money away and then not spending a certain amount of money. That leaves me with a very small amount of money to actually spend throughout the week. I mean, like every week pretty much so far, I've been spending only like fifty dollars a week and that's pretty much to just restock uh whatever i eat in the truck minus if i decide to have a five dollar meal from mcdonald's or ten dollar meal from from wendy's or something you know um that's an important topic about uh trucking that i would like to talk to uh other guys who are rookies in the industry and you, you guys out there that are veterans, you also know too, eating out here is ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. You know, if you go to a Petro or you go to, what is it, a Country Pride, the, the Country Pride restaurants are not what they used to be. And the same thing with Petro. I remember as a kid, we went to Iowa one time. And we didn't stop at Iowa 80, but we we'd stopped at some Petro along the way. And I remember the Iron Skillet restaurant is actually pretty damn good. You know, we we went in there and we had um, was it? I forget what we we had the buffet, and the buffet was actually like really good food. It was like actually cooked food. And now you go to Tierra Petro to go to a sit-down restaurant and get a frozen steak. I mean, and, and, and the service is awful. Absolutely awful. So, I've pretty much resorted to, like, you know, every once in a while I might go in to get something, but if I do, it's maybe chicken strips or something. But the, even that's overpriced. I mean, eight bucks for... Just for some chicken strips and some fries, dude. No joke. Ridiculous. Um, but I would do that when I was with Schneider. 
just because when I was with Schneider, the first two trucks I had there were both Freightliners, and we couldn't. There was no way for me to hook up a fridge unless I had an inverter, and I didn't have the money to spend on an inverter. So, for the most part, I was spending between $150, $200 a week just to eat. And um, you know, I'm a I'm a big boy. You know, I I probably eat more than I should. I, well, I'm not gonna. You can tell I eat more than I should. That that's a given. It's obvious. Nobody cares though. But um, it, it's it's strange because I came from working in a factory and being home every night. You know, and I, you know, you get comfortable knowing. Okay, you know, I finished my job at the factory. I can go home, wash up and go have a nice meal or a small meal for pretty cheap at whatever restaurant, right? You know, have a nice cold beer to, to finish the night off with. It, it, it's not like that out here. It's not like that out here at all. Everything is double the price at the truck stops than what it is at home. And, and it's ridiculous. And because And if the thing is, the worst part about it for me is that the quality of the products you're getting is worse than what you would get at some other places at home that are cheap. Um, it, it just kind of boggles the mind, like, why? This doesn't make any sense. But they, they do it because they know they can. And Pilot, TA, Petro, Flying J, I don't care which one of them is. It doesn't matter what truck stop you go to, unless it is a mom and pop shop, they are all going to be overpriced. Simple fact. And it doesn't matter what you're buying, they're all going to be overpriced. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, a bottle of soda, a 20 ounce bottle of soda at a pilot will cost you twice as much as it would for a bottle of soda at the regular gas station across the street. I mean, why? And it's because they, the way they view it, they have a limited certain amount of customers that come in every day. They know how much they can make every single day off of all these guys that are coming in. If they don't have a refrigerator, or even if they do have a refrigerator, they have to stock up well, we've got everything you need, so why go across the street? It's as simple as that. Where Now, I, I like to, if I can, find a Walmart, park there, go inside and shop, or even a Target, or um, if not a, if not Walmart, then Target, or I uh, forget what are the, the other place is. But either of those two are usually really good to get you some some pretty decent prices on stuff and get you a reasonable amount of quality for the product you're buying for the cheap price um it's just ridiculous with these truck stops but um otherwise i mean i'm stopped right now at a shell station just a shell gas station that's got some diesel pumps in the back for some semis and there's a dirt lot across from it and um my my cards don't work except for my EFS card for buying fuel and they don't do cash advances and I, that's that's what I tried to do I was like you know I was like could I get a cash advance and they're like oh well sorry we don't do that so that was kind of I was kind of bummed out and there's a Whataburger right there right and it, it's something that I haven't had in years literally years I haven't had this place and there's a there's a sandwich that I like to get from the place that I like I said I don't I hardly ever get to have one I might have one every other year depending on how often I go to Texas uh, which is not often by the way and even when I do come here most times if I stop somewhere a Whataburger is not that close by so I'll pass them up on the interstate but I won't have the opportunity to stop but if you live in North Carolina like I do they don't have Whataburger. Um, Alabama doesn't have them. Mississippi has them. Alabama doesn't. Uh, Georgia doesn't. 
South Carolina, Tennessee, and uh, Kentucky don't have them. It pretty much, pretty much the only places that have Whataburger is like Oklahoma, Texas, and Mississippi. Those are like the only three states, like at least that I know of. I think they may have expanded west, but otherwise, I mean. It, it's virtually impossible to find it anywhere east of Mississippi. So, and, and this is a place that I grew up liking and loving and whatnot because there's two places I've lived in Texas. Um, I, when I was very young, we moved away from Alabama. That's where I originally uh, was born. And I lived there until I was about seven years old. And we moved to Austin, Texas. And I lived there for two years. So by the time I was nine years old, we moved to Oklahoma. And Oklahoma, like I said, has Whataburger too. So like I, like I mean, I still grew up with the same restaurant. I still liked it. Um, it wasn't as good in, in Oklahoma as it is in Texas. I, I promise you that. But it's, it's one of those things. It's, uh, it's like Texas barbecue. Nobody makes Texas barbecue like Texans. I mean, nobody makes a brisket like a Texan. All right? I'm just saying. Texas brisket is the shiz, all right? That if you're looking for good for good barbecue in Texas, get you some brisket. And I forget what place it was I stopped when I worked at Schneider, but there was a place I stopped on my way to Dallas. Um, it's right next to a Mexican restaurant, and I can't name the I can't remember the name of this place for the life of me, and it's been killing me ever since. It's not a big chain. Um, stay away from the big chains because they're overrated. But th there's it's just a small place. But when you go in, it's kind of like uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like what a Luby's is. But when you go in, you know, they cut the meat in front of you and like like they have a whole brisket, right? And as you go down the line, you tell them what you want. Say, so, well, okay, I want um, some slices of brisket, right? You know, like four slices of brisket. So they'll cut four slices of brisket and then they've got like these three homemade sauces that they make and it was so good. Like they had... Um, they had like a sweet a sweet sauce, then they had kind of like a mild sauce, and then they had one that'll set your mouth on fire. And I got the one that'll set your mouth on fire, and that was not a mistake. That was honestly some of the best barbecue I've had since I've been in Texas, even since I've lived in Texas. But, um, yeah, I mean, I miss the state. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but, uh, yeah. Um... But tomorrow morning, we're going to get up in the morning, uh, probably about 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And we're going to run this thing all the way into uh, New Caney, Texas. I'm going to drop it there, and i got to go to Houston, pick up my load in Houston, and I'm going to Shreveport, Louisiana. And we're going to drop off there, and then I should be headed on my way home at some point. Um, I'm supposed to be home by Thursday. I'm hoping, that this pray that I'm hoping and I'm praying that this works out. But I'm supposed to be going back to home to North Carolina because my fiance's grandmother's birthday is we're we're, ho we're hosting a party for it on uh, Saturday. So and we're we were trying to move out of our place that we're living in right now so that we can just be done with this lease on this place that we're at right now. So you know, just a lot of stuff to do. Uh, you know, my plate's full. So, we got a lot of things we got to do, so I'm going to call it a night. Um, I'm about to hit the sack. You guys, stay safe. God bless. Um, take care, all right? See y'all later on.